Hello, welcome to another reading vlog. This is not quite a reading challenge, but kind of a reading challenge vlog. I basically am doing a 48 hour readathon with my patrons this weekend. It's currently Saturday. And I have loosely set myself a challenge that it's also okay if I don't complete. So the challenge <laughs> is this. This is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shan, and this is the prequel to Prior of the Orange Tree, which was initially a standalone fantasy. I loved that book. I read it back in 2018. I had an arc of that one. I have an arc of this one. It doesn't come out until January. So thank you so much to Bloomsbury for sending me this through. Loved Priory, never expected to get more from that world, and kind of allowed that world to fall out of my head a little bit. And now we are back with this prequel, pre 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 prequel, prequel prequel, A Day of Fallen Night. I couldn't tell you what this is about yet and I have read 74 pages. Honestly, I'm daunted by this massively because it is friggin' huge. It's about 840 or so pages and I wanna try and read it this weekend. See why I said I wasn't really gonna hold myself to it if I couldn't achieve this goal? I just wanted to have a little bit of fun with a challenge for this. I challenged myself last year over the Halloween weekend to read Empire of the Vampire in one weekend and I did do it. I did have the audiobook for that, which definitely helped. I don't have an audiobook for this one, obviously. If I do not complete this book within 48 hours, I will still be vlogging reading it. This is not a 48 hour reading vlog. This is just a vlog for this book, but I wanna see how much I can read over this weekend. I am doing Patreon sprints both this afternoon, now, I'm on them now actually, and tomorrow. So I'm sprinting all day with my patrons for our readathon, and I hope that that'll help me read a good chunk. I did maths on it based on my average page speed, and I think it was something like, if I did nine 45 minute sprints on each day, I could do it. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I have read a little bit this morning, as I've said. At the moment, I'm honestly just kind of confused. There is a lot of different characters. There is a lot of lore, and I don't remember too much from Priory to have an established base for that. Obviously, as this is a prequel anyway, it doesn't really matter whether I had that established base or not. There's so many people's names to remember. There is a glossary at the back, but when I'm just going through each paragraph, I don't want to take time to go back to the glossary and break the moment that I was reading from there. It's definitely confusing me at the moment and I hope that it falls into place soon because that is distracting me massively from the story right now because there's just so many characters, so many different narratives that we're following and so many different areas that we're in that I just need to get my head wrapped around it all to then actually focus on the progression of the story. <laughs> so I need that to fall into place soon, which hopefully it will. Honestly, it looks like I've read nothing. <laughs> I started it at midnight last night because I wanted to to try and stick true to the 48 hour thing and see how much I could read in that time. So this is my challenge for the weekend. Let's see how much of this I can read and generally update you on my thoughts. Again, spoiler free, but I know that a lot of people asked for a vlog for this book. So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, I'm making a very small amount of progress in this book. I feel like I should have made much more of a dent because we're currently nearly four hours into sprints and I am only 160 something pages into this. I have done a couple of other things whilst we're sprinting, but generally I have been sitting down to read. This is definitely still confusing me. It is a lot. There are so many character names to remember, and I know I mentioned the glossary at the back. I'm gonna show you that in a minute because it is so long. Also, some of the characters' names are occasionally shortened to other names, which is throwing me further as well. So that is really making me slow down and have to kind of think about who everybody is. And even when I have really thought about it, I still don't know who everybody is. So I feel like I'm not getting absorbed into it at the moment which is such a shame because I'm so looking forward to this book and I know that it's gonna be a really epic story. And we just had a big dramatic scene, but I still can't properly follow exactly what's happening because I can't yet connect who is who and which part of the story these people are all involved with. Also, because the chapter headings don't give you who you're following immediately, you have to take time to establish that. So the chapter headings give you the location that you're in, so like North, south, east, west, why did I say that in that order? Anyway, it gives you the location that you're in rather than saying the specific character. So you have to take a minute to establish who it is you're following in that location, which then, again, takes a little bit of time to get your head around. I'm not loving it at the moment, I'm not gonna lie. I hope that it does pick up for me. And as I am just scratching the surface of, of what I've read for it so far, I feel like it's got a lot of a way to go but I'm just gonna show you the, the character glossary at the back of the book. So this is the character glossary. I like that it's called The Persons of the Tale. This is honestly around 20 pages or just shy of 20 pages long. And then once you get to the end of this, 
you are then given a oh wait hang on i skipped a bit there's a timeline and also a normal glossary of like place names and various different names of things within the book so i mean samantha shan is definitely giving us stuff to help here like obviously this is a very chonky high fantasy book with its own world building and magic system so we've definitely been given the resources to help i just think i need to get my head around it a little bit more and i really hope that happens soon Hey, it's now Sunday and I <laughs> I have not made the progress that I was hoping to have made by day two in this book. I have about 600 and something pages left. Now I'm trying to use the logic of I could read a 400 page book in one day so could I try and push that to read 600 pages in one day. I just <laughs> I don't know how realistic it is with this book because this is very heavy, it's very dense, it's very info dumpy still at the moment. I feel like that's all my updates have been. But I, yeah, it's not the easiest one to get through in a short amount of time. So I'm slightly questioning this challenge, not challenge I've set myself, but I will keep going to try and read as much as possible today. And hopefully the story starts clicking into place. Also, I got some book mail. So if you've seen my recent horror videos, you'll know that I'm trying to find a book that scares me. And my mum suggested the Amityville Horror. She said it absolutely terrified her. Now I couldn't find a copy of this for ages. I just was really struggling to find anything in store. And then I looked into it a bit more and realized that it was out of print. So I went on to World of Books and managed to get this pretty decent condition secondhand copy. This is a haunted house story that apparently will make me wake up at three something or other in the morning. I don't know why, but my mum says it absolutely terrifies her and wishes me the best of luck with it. So <laughs> I'm excited to see what's scary about this one and hopefully it does scare me. But this is, again, my constant search to find the fear. Obviously, not reading this in this vlog, but I just wanted to haul it. Just about to go on to Patreon sprints now. It is nearly 11.30, so I will pretty much have a full day of reading ahead of me. I was going for a walk this morning with some friends, but that didn't end up happening, so I've literally got the whole day to read. So hopefully I can get a decent page count in. Hello, it is nearly two o'clock in the afternoon and I have made some progress with this book. Like, look, that's an actual dent in it now. I feel accomplished. <laughs> I'm definitely finding it is slowly starting to click in some places, in some aspects of the storyline because we're following multiple different things happening. I assume they're all gonna tie together, but it does mean that I'm kind of having to readjust each time we follow a new area and remember what they were up to the last time we were with them. But I'm slowly starting to get there, especially with one of the storylines in particular. So the one that is my favorite is the one that is following the people that are looking after the orange tree, the prioress, prioresses, is that the right word? I should know given that I'm reading the book. Something like that. The people that are looking after the orange tree. One of the things that I really like about that aspect of things is that we have got the flip of the kind of typical stereotypical role reverses that you see in a fantasy and that the men are the people that are looking after the homes, they're doing the cooking and the cleaning and the sewing and the women are the warriors and they're trained to fight and I absolutely love that to bits. I think that's really great and I love that that is what we see a lot in Samantha Shannon's writing so I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. Now <laughs> Yesterday on Patreon Live, I was saying how this book reminds me of the TikTok audio that is somebody saying, it's been like seven days since I left, blah, 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 blah. as usual, my companion, blah, 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 and Carl. And like, it's basically saying that fantasies have a lot of names and places and it's hard to keep up with them all. And it was like a summary of how I was feeling about this book. And then I was reading this book on the last sprints and there's now someone called Carl in this book and everyone else I'm still trying to remember who is who and now we have a Carl and I just found that funny because it was it, it is now the TikTok audio anyway I am as I said I'm getting a bit more into it I'm still confused I'm not gonna lie I am still confused but it's slowly taking shape I'm excited to be able to hit the halfway point today at least I mean I'm gonna try and read as much as possible today I don't see myself finishing this today I mean I definitely see myself finishing it this week but if I can at least hit the halfway point and then some, I will be happy. All right, sprints are over. We were live for about seven hours and I have read over the halfway point in this book. It's definitely picking up for me now. The action is happening. There are big epic moments. There's big plot 
evolving moments that I'm trying not to say too much about. There's goosebumpy reveal moments. So we're definitely getting more of what I wanted this book to have all along. And I think it just took the time to build. And now that it's happening, I definitely feel like I'm into the flow of this a lot more. And I've got a little bit more of a retention of who is who now. That took me about, I reckon that took me about 400 pages to really get that. And now I'm pretty comfortable with that. And I am 500 and something pages in, 511 pages. I'm not gonna do a great deal more reading today. I might do a little bit more reading before bed, but I'm gonna have a bit of a self-care evening tonight. So I'm not gonna sit down now and do any more reading. I'm gonna go get ready for bed, do face mask, wash my hair, all of that kind of thing. And then watch a film tonight with dinner. So I'm gonna, for this part of the vlog, <laughs> wrap up this day and I will continue updates with you tomorrow. I'm doing Patreon sprints tomorrow evening so hopefully we'll be able to read some more there. Obviously I didn't finish this within 40 hours. I think once I started it I could see that was probably a little bit unrealistic because I'd forgotten what to expect from this writing style and how heavy it would be. So now that I've kind of established that a little bit more I think I can set myself a slightly more realistic goal which should be to finish it by Thursday which is what I would now like to be able to do before I head back to my family home because she too chonky. I, I don't want to be bringing this back with me to my family home for the sake of a few days. So that is my goal. I will keep you posted, of course, as I said, update you tomorrow when I've read a bit more, but I have about 350 pages left. So hopefully, hopefully it's doable. And I'm still pretty proud like to have read that much over one weekend. And it's a tall book as well. And it's a heavy, dense read. I am pleased and I'm really pleased it's picking up because I was worried that I wasn't going to enjoy it because of how much info was being thrown at me. It's It wasn't that it was at all anything bad with the book, I just felt like I was being overwhelmed with it all, but it's clicked into place, it's all good, I'm having a good time. Also a quick massive shout out to my patrons for sprinting with me this weekend, it's been a really good 24 hour, no 48 hour, 48 hour readathon, and I don't think I would have read nearly as much without these sprints. It is the next day and I have got this much left of A Day of Fallen Night, I was reading a little bit in bed this morning, I regrettably set my alarm early so I could read in bed to try and get some pages in. I mean, I was happy to be sat reading and especially with the heated blanket on under me, but I felt really tired today. So I don't know if it was the best idea, but I'm now about to join some more Patreon sprints and hopefully read a bit more. I have a hundred pages left of A Day of Fallen Night. I feel really proud of myself for being able to read this over the course of a few days. It's been a big chunky book on my TBR for a while. It's been a book that I've been daunted by. It's been a book I knew I wanted to read before release date, which is January. So I felt like I had a deadline on it. And I am I'm proud of myself for the progress I've been able to make. And I am enjoying it. I think it's sitting around a four out of five stars at the moment. I think it can't quite bridge the five star for me because whilst I can see it's fantastically written and the story is certainly very vast and very engrossing, it was very heavy, very info dumpy at the start. And whilst that has now helped me feel more immersed in this world and like I'm very familiar with these characters I've only known for a few days, I think it did flood me with information to start with and that did put me off a little bit. As, as I've said in this vlog, sorry, I feel like this vlog is just me repeating the same thing in the same location. I actually need to leave my flat at some point. I haven't gone outside for quite a few days. I've literally just been reading constantly and working. So I need to actually leave my flat. Maybe that'll happen tomorrow, who knows? Samantha Shanna's writing is incredibly immersive and the ability to create these huge epic fantasy worlds is fantastic. There's quite a few characters I don't trust and that scares me. And I don't know how brutal Samantha Shannon is going to be with these characters and that scares me. So I don't know if everyone's gonna have a happy ending. I don't know what direction this is gonna take. I feel like there's gonna be some bitter endings. I don't know, I kind of, don't know which I'd prefer as well. I never know whether I prefer a happy ending or a sad ending in a book. Let me know in the comments which you prefer. I genuinely don't know. It, I think it depends on the book. Sometimes I feel like a happy ending can be too cliche, whereas a sad ending, it, it feels more epic and more tragic, but at the same time can be quite open-ended as well. And you do want the best for your characters, but I don't know where this one's heading. I really don't. Samantha Shannon is also fantastic at creating cliffhangers at the end of a chapter in a way that hooks me on so much because we're following multiple different narratives. We get a cliffhanger at the end of a chapter and then we don't go back to that character for like three or four chapters and it's just killing me because I need to know what happens. So in that sense, there's a lot of suspense and a lot of waiting in this novel, but in the best way in terms of 
big reveal moments that I need to know more about, which is a clever way, I think, of moving the story along when you are following multiple different narratives. And I think, obviously, I've said at the start, this was very info dumpy. I was struggling to find out who was who. I'm not gonna lie, I still am a little bit in that phase where I'm not 100% on who is who. I'm getting there. I mean, I should be, I've got 100 pages left. But there are still some characters that I have to remind myself who everybody is. But I think having the, the cliffhangers and the suspense with each chapter is definitely compelling me to keep going. And I think reading this so intently over the course of two, three days has definitely added to that intensity. So it's been an interesting reading experience and I would be interested to see how much that's impacted my enjoyment of the book, reading it in such quick succession. But I do look forward to finishing this. I do look forward to seeing what Samantha Chan does with the characters in the end, I'm scared. I think I'll probably read about another 50 or so pages tonight and then finish it tomorrow, hopefully. I got up early to read in bed this morning and that definitely helped me read a fairly good chunk before starting work today. I have got a busy day tomorrow, so I don't know for sure if I will have time or not to finish it, but it's just so satisfying seeing that little tiny gap at the end there. So yeah, 100 pages left, kind of scared, definitely enjoying it, really glad I am enjoying it. And I am intrigued to see how this ends. And I will let you know my thoughts when I finish this book. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna finish this in bed this morning. However, I've woken up early to try and finish it. I have 50 pages left. I was reading last night and could not put this down. I feel like the last 100 pages have definitely been a ride. Very epic. A lot of big moments, a lot of big dramatic, tense moments. So here's to the final 50 pages of this chunky, chunky book. I will go in. in. finished A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon and I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I got up early this morning to finish this book and it was worth it. I will say that everything I said at the start of this vlog definitely stands. It was definitely very complicated at the start and there was a lot of information to process and that certainly hindered my enjoyment of the book at the start because I just felt overwhelmed and like I didn't know what was going on. And I'm gonna say that that never completely went away. There was always that sense of a lot happening and not 100% following every single aspect of it. However, this was so epic and it came to such a fantastic conclusion. The last 100 pages were a lot in a very good way. I love the feminism in Samantha Shannon's writing. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The way that the women in this book are represented and the way that we have the role reversals being flipped. I adore this so, so much. I really like the fact that the women are these powerhouses. They are the saviors. And I really enjoy the way that we get to see that in multiple different women that we follow and that it's not just one woman, it is multiple women across these characters. There were quite a few good romances going on in this as well. I'm not a big romance fan, however, I think it worked well to soften some of the more serious topics in this book and some of the political fantasy elements of it. Now I've sat on it a little bit because I finished it a couple of hours ago, I definitely I'm pretty comfortable with the 4.5 star rating. I think it didn't quite broach the five star because as I was saying yesterday, it did still have that feeling at the start where I was like, ah, so that was for me why it didn't quite get into the five star territory. However, really fantastic, epic moments. I love a good big epic battle as well. And this had that, which I really enjoyed. I always really enjoy how fast paced those moments get and how everyone is everywhere and you just don't know what is gonna happen to your faves. And just, it's really good. I felt very invested. And I thought it was fab. It was definitely chonky. It's definitely a daunting read. However, I finished it and I liked it. I can't believe I actually managed to read this in four days. I really can't. I have spent a lot of time reading over the last three days. I mean, today, obviously I finished it this morning. So I had a couple of hours, well, an hour or so reading it this morning, but I yeah, spent a lot of time reading 
and it was worth it to feel very immersed in this world. So thank you so much to Bloomsbury for sending me an early copy of this book. It does come out in January. If you would like to bag yourself a copy, I'm so excited for everyone else to be able to read this. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this vlog. I feel like it's been a bit jumbled and all over the place, but that has been my reading experience for this book. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please give this video a thumbs up, comment down below telling me what the chunkiest book on your TBR is, and subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. You can also find a link down below to my Patreon where I do lots of extra content, including the live shows that helped me read this book. And you can find a link down below to my online shop. Thank you so much for watching, keep smiling and stay positive.